We've showed you how to create a harness when changing out your car stereo. So the next logical step in your car stereo system is to add an amp. You're either gonna amplify a stock set of speakers or an aftermarket set of speakers. The one thing you may or may not wanna do is actually run new speaker wires to the door. What we're gonna show you today is actually how to run speaker wires from your amp to your stock head unit location and use the existing cabling in the car to make your life easy. So we're gonna take the speaker level outputs and connect it to the factory harness to use your existing speaker wires. So to demonstrate this, we're gonna do this all hypothetically. We're not actually gonna do it through a car. That way we can actually lay it out on a table and you can see what the connections will look like. If you recognize these speaker cables, it's because we use this amplifier to show you how to wire two channel, three channel, four channel, and five channel to a four channel amp. So what we're gonna do is use these cables again and actually wire the output of the amp to the existing speaker wire. And we have our Metro harness that we wired to our aftermarket radio harness. And we're just gonna make all of our splices in between. And we're gonna show you exactly how to do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the parts out on the table as they would be in your car. Since this is a hypothetical install, you'll get to see the parts as they lay and the connection. And just so you can visualize, much easier. Just like the hypothetical amplifier installation, we're gonna show you a two channel setup and a four channel setup. With a two channel setup, we're gonna use the amp to power the fronts and the aftermarket radio to power the rears. Then we're gonna take you through having a four channel amp power all the speakers and no longer using the aftermarket radio's internal amp. First thing we're gonna do is solder up two of our speaker leads from the amplifier to our front speakers. To get started, we'll untape our harness. And we're doing a nice job unwrapping the tape. That way we may be able to actually save the tape. So now that we've got the harness unwrapped, what we're gonna do is identify our front speaker wires, solder our connections from our aftermarket speaker wires running from the amp to the factory radio location. As we showed you on how to wire an aftermarket stereo to a Metro wiring harness, the front speakers are identified with the white pair and the gray pair. So we're gonna cut our connections here and wire in the aftermarket speaker wires running from the amp to the factory head unit location. And as we like to do is make sure everything is equal length, go ahead and cut those off and then we'll start soldering up our new connections. One thing you wanna do before soldering is to label your wires. What we do is we use a P-Touch, print nice labels, and then use heat shrink tubing over the label to make a really, really nice wire label. This way, once you have all the wires run in the car, it's easy to identify at the amplifier what's the left front, what's the right front, what's the right rear and left rear. We'll start by stripping all the wires. We'll be soldering these connections, so we'll cut our heat shrink tubing. Now that we've prepared all our wires and our heat shrink tubing, as we showed in the harness video, 
the solid color is the positive and the one with the black stripe is the negative. So we'll need to make sure that we properly match up our pairs. The last thing we need to do now that we've made our speaker connections is run our remote turn on lead. So we're gonna solder that too and then put a uh, spade connector on it so that we can make a nice connection at the end. The one thing you'll need to check is, do you need remote turn on for either the existing speakers in the factory amp, antenna amplifier, or possibly a power antenna? If you do, you'll need to make a T connection. But in our case, this vehicle does not have a factory amp and we no longer need the connection. So we'll make the exact same type of connection we did for the speaker cables. We've wired up our speaker wires, we have our remote turn on. On this amplifier, we have our power input terminals and speaker terminals on the same side. So we'll need to cut our uh, remote turn on to the exact same length. One thing we haven't done yet is insulate any of the previous speaker connectors, which we will do in just a second. All we're trying to do is just make sure that we have all of the same length cabling. So one way to insulate the previous speaker wires is to cut them at different lengths. So you could cut one this length, you can cut another one just a tad shorter, cut one in the middle of those two, and then cut one even longer. This way if we actually just taped them up, they wouldn't touch anything. But we don't like to do things like that, some people do, we'll cut them equal length and we'll just put some heat shrink over them so they can't. We've completed our two channel system. We have our remote turn on and our speaker wires. We'll tape up the harness using the Tessa tape and we'll make a final connection. We've taped up our harness and as you can see, we have a T. So we have our two new speaker wires and our remote turn on. Since this is a hypothetical, we'll make our connections to the amp.
better visualize, we'll grab a radio. Imagine that this we're plugging into your car and we'll run our RCAs. Since we've only run just our front channels from our amplifier to our factory harness, all we'll need to do is connect the front RCAs. play harness that goes directly to the factory speaker wire. We have our RCAs to the amp and we have our remote turn on from the aftermarket radio. Our hypothetical system is complete, a two channel system powering the fronts. Next we'll wire up a four channel powering our front and rears from the factory speaker wires with our four channel amp. We'll sever the connections between the aftermarket radio and the stock speaker connector and then run two more leads coming off the amp to the rear speakers. You have the option of using a second set of RCAs from the rear RCA output to the rear RCA input. You can also just use a single set of RCAs using the internal switch to run in two channel mode. Internally, the amplifier will distribute the audio signal to all four channels. We'll cut our rear speaker connections from the aftermarket harness to the metro harness. And then cut the connections to the metro harness. We'll make sure to use the right cable when making our connections. So green being left rear. We finished soldering all our connections. We'll use some Tessa tape to make our harness look nice. We'll set it up as a T, just like we did when we did the two channel setup. And then we'll make our connections. We begin making our four channel connections, starting with the rear channels first because they're located on the bottom.
Hopefully you have a little bit better idea on how to wire an amplifier to your aftermarket head unit location and use the new amp to power all your speakers. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Quality Mobile Video and thanks for watching.